signal processing, which is my discipline, is really, really a perfect interplay between math and computer science because you have the mathematical models, but you also have the implementation of these mathematical models. And without the computer science aspect of it, you know, there would be very little signal processing done today. This is Paolo Prandoni, a senior researcher at TPFL. But what is signal processing? I guess that to understand what signal processing is, uh, you first have to define what a signal is. And the idea is, whenever you have, a, say, a physical or a man-made phenomenon that changes over time, and you want to describe this phenomenon in a, in a quantitative way, well, this, say, take the weather, you might want to measure, I don't know, the wind speed or the rainfall, or your body you want to measure your temperature or your sugar levels. And when these quantities evolve over time, you end up with a signal. So a description of a natural phenomenon that evolves over time. So you have this time series or this function uh, over time of this quantity that you want to track. And processing comes in when you try to extract information from this time series. You, you want to manipulate it to get the relevant information, maybe understand better the phenomenon behind. And that's what signal processing is all about. But what kind of phenomena are we talking about? What are the applications of signal processing? The beautiful thing about signal processing is that you have a set of core competences that are very clearly defined. But then this is like the sun at the, at the uh, center of the solar system. And then the influence of these core competences extends very, very, very far away. And you have this perfect meshing of signal processing techniques with a lot of other disciplines. So today, for instance, uh, you know, you have uh, life sciences. There are a new uh, subject even here at PFL that is uh, very successful and very exciting. And there are so many signal processing techniques, for instance, that help life scientists bring forth new discoveries and understand how things work. But at the same time, you can use signal processing techniques in finance, for instance. So you can use them, of course, in communication systems. So there's a lot of disciplines that merge very well with signal processing. And that's why signal processing is so exciting. How about a more concrete example? Whenever, for instance, you want to model from the high-level models of uh, the way neurons interact with each other, um, finding out uh, uh, how neural spikes uh, evolve over time and how they interact, these are all signals that you have to manipulate with things like Fourier transforms or filters or uh, time frequency analysis. And these classic signal processing techniques uh, lend a fantastic insight into how this biosystems work. I'm sure you've heard of big data and other buzzwords like the Internet of Things. These will likely lead to an even wider range of applications of signal processing. So we should probably familiarize ourselves better with the core techniques of signal processing. And the first thing to keep in mind is the fact that because we want to use computers, many signal processing techniques are actually computational tools. When we talk about signal processing today, I should have said that in the beginning, we talk basically about digital signal processing. So the first core technique in signal processing is being able to acquire a signal from the real world and transform that into a sequence of numbers and then we can crunch with computer science techniques, right? So sampling uh, is the core technique that allows us to bring the outside world into our digital devices. And that's why signal processing is so powerful today. Okay, so say our signals have been digitized. What now? And once you have this information in digital format inside your computer, then you have a set of basic techniques like uh, time frequency analysis, so Fourier transforms, for instance, the ability to look at the same data from a different perspective. Usually you look at data in time as it evolves, but you can just flip the perspective of your uh, viewpoints and look at the same data from the point of view of frequency. So um, another way of looking at the same data that can highlight specific properties of the data itself. We talked about Fourier analysis with Michael Kaparov in previous videos, including recent advances that allow for faster Fourier computations. You have uh, filters, so devices that can enhance or cut certain um, parts of the signal in the frequency domain. So classic examples, if you have your equalizer in your stereo, you can boost the bass or boost the treble. These are filters that manipulate the information contained in the, contained in the signal. I personally use this, for instance, to remove the background noise of the video. You have compression techniques, uh, the ability to remove uh, redundant information from the signal while keeping the relevant information intact. We talked about how tricky data compression can be with information theorist Rudiger Urbanke. 
And this is what, for instance, allows us to have a lot of music in our cell phones or very uh, compact um, files that contain, say, a whole movie. So uh, these are the core competence techniques that are at the basis of signal processing. Transform takes your original function, your original information, and expresses it in a different language where you can compress it. So today what we're having is um, an ever-growing uh, importance of uh, things like machine learning, deep learning. And uh, these techniques put signal processing in a bit of an identity crisis.